So you also need to know when the last medication was given. Um, you know, it, it may look really good on the day that you see the patient because the treatment worked well. And if you don't have any visions, it's a little difficult to, to know uh, what, what's, what's going on. Um, another issue is in case of referrals, um, you know, there are certain drugs that, that ideally should be stopped for prior to skin testing. So, for example, antihistamines, uh, uh, we recommend to stop that for 7 to 10 days. Uh, steroids, all, all types of steroids, uh, whether it is injectable or oral, um, should be discontinued for, for a, a month. Um, and there are drugs, for example, that can have an effect on, on, the, on the T4. So if you measure T4 in a patient has been on certain medications, uh, it may decrease the senses of, of T4. Okay, and just, just one more question. I mean, as you can see, there's lots of details, but every little detail counts, and, and it's like uh, taking history is like uh, doing an investigation. Um, might want to find out if the animal gets better or worse with the change of the environment, and so, um, you know, that typically is... Uh, the forced air heating, the carpets, the rugs that I, that I mentioned, um, that would be the issue of house dust mite. Uh, contact with grass uh, can also be, be a trigger when the, the dogs are taken out in the summer. You know, swimming, that's not going to be um, the underlying cause of a tidies, but certainly could, could contribute, could, you know, uh, uh, cause more, more harm. Um, and the geographic location, and a perfect example of that is, uh, you know, British Columbia versus Colorado. Uh, we have lots of fleas. They don't. Uh, so the, you know, where the where people move uh, from their pets, they may also be bringing uh, diseases that are not necessarily uh, found in British Columbia. Okay. So this was again that that movie. Uh, mm -hmm. And now we're just going to go to the more interactive part, which is um, about diagnostic tests. So we'll try to do as much as we can. And, and uh, if you want a copy of the notes, just email me. Um, first step, take history. Second step is obtain the minimal database. And the minimal database uh, is skin scrapings, urine skin cytologies. Um, and those uh, two steps are really critical. It's probably 95% of the dermatology consult that's done right there. Everything, everything uh, else will, will um, be chosen um, in regards to the history and the diagnostic tests. Um, you know, whether it is uh, more diagnostic tests, more sophisticated diagnostic tests, or, um, you know, the treatments as well. Okay, so those are really important tests. All right. So the usual suspects. So uh, this, this is based on a, on the game of Clue. Uh, we've got the bacteria. So it could be a rod like Pseudomonas, or it could, it could be a, um, a cocci like Staphylococcus or Streptococcus. And then we've got the yeast, uh, which is Malassezia typically. And uh, so Candida is extremely rare in, in, in animals. Uh, Malassezia is the, is the yeast that they get. Um, we've got the dermatophyte, which is ringworm. That's obviously a very important one. And then you've got um, superficial mites, um, such as Skeletella, which causes walking dandruff, or, or Sarcoptes, which causes scabies, um, or lice as well. So those are typically causing um, a lot of paritis, and they live on the surface of the skin. Um, you've got the cat flea, uh, which is uh, the, the most common uh, flea in dogs and cats, and um, Demodex, which lives within the hair follicles. And the common cause of skin disease is certainly by far the most common parasitic skin disease in dogs. So those were the uh, usual suspects. So we're going to try to look for them in different clinical presentations. Um, now the good news about dermatology is that it's uh, it's inexpensive. Um, you know you don't need uh, lots of instruments. Uh, so I'll just present the weapons. You need uh, the knife, which is the scalpel blade. Uh, you also need gla glass slides. Um, you need uh, some kind of forceps to pull hair. So that's to do a trichogram or hair plucking. Uh, a flea comb. Um, you need cotton swabs, a uh, wood lamp, and some scotch tape. And you're all set. That's all you need to practice dermatology. 
Now, we're going to go into different rooms. Uh, that's just based on the, on the board game. And um, we'll kind of see where, so the first uh, presentation is going to be an area of non-predic alopecia and erythema. So just to show you a photo that will probably speak a lot more to you. Just the bulldog here. Um, now I could be using these photos for lots of skin diseases. Um, but if you just want to take a guess, what, um, what would you be concerned about when you see a patient like this? You, you can just participate, we're not, you know, there's no uh, stupid answers, it's good questions. So you do have, um, I'm going to have to use the mouse here, you do have the erythema and apicia on the face, uh, muzzle, chin, actually if you look down here, same on the feet, and then just multiple areas of circular alopecia and erythema on the trunk. Okay, just anybody? Good, yeah, very good, that's certainly... A very uh, good one, especially in this brief. Um, anything else? No? There's a couple more that you, you could consider, and, and usually it's, you know, they come as a, as a trio of differential. So what, what you have here, basically, um, is you have a folliculitis. Um, you, the, the reason why the hair is falling out is because the hair follicle is infected. And there are three things that can infect the hair follicle. So you do have Demodex, Demodex which is a, a mite. The second possibility is a bacteria, um, like Staphylococcus typically, but it could be other, other bacteria. And the last one is ringworm or, derm or dermatophyte, um, which is microsporum, canis typically. Uh, okay, so when you see a patient like this, until proven otherwise, uh, obviously this could be an allergy, this could be Cushing's, I mean, it could be anything. But you're going to want to look for sure for Bimodex, bacteria, and dermatophytes. Okay, so that's Bimodex. Okay, so you've already kind of answered. Um, I basically wanted two, two answers. We're just going to focus on the, on the Bimodex and the dermatophytes. I'll kind of show you other presentations of bacterial infections further down. And, you know, it, it, may, it may look qu quite different with bacteria too. And uh, we're just going to be using our um, forceps and, and the scalpel blades to do a deep skin scraping. So what you want to do with the deep skin scraping is uh, you really want to squeeze because you're trying to extrude the content of the hair follicle on, on your, on your uh, blade. Um, you want to do multiple skin scrapings, um, but you don't want to do them, uh, you know, in the very large areas. You can do large areas when you do a superficial skin scraping, but you, because you really have to make the skin bleed, um, you know, that might be a little too much uh, for the owners. Um, what can also be helpful after the scraping is to use um, peroxide and just clean up, just clean up the blood. Uh, owners, you know, get really freaked out. We do all these tests in front of the owners, so. Um, if you do it in the back, it's probably fine, but just clean up uh, afterwards. Uh, but it is important to, to get to that point. Uh, otherwise, it's not a deep skin scraping. If you don't see blood on the slide, you haven't uh, scraped uh, deep enough. And if you haven't scraped deep enough, you cannot rule out demonicosis. If you do, uh, if you have scraped uh, deep enough and you don't see demonix, it's not demonicosis. So you can see what is called the capillary oozing. So it's just going to be, uh, you know, it's going to get a little bloody, and don't do it in a, in a very large area. Then you put the content on the slide. In some areas of the body, I would say on the feet, especially if they are really oozy and, and uncomfortable, um, and around the eyes, you may not want to use a scalpel blade. Um, you know, be, be careful. Um, Typically on the feet and around the eyes, we do prefer a, a hair pluck, which is called a trichogram. As you just basically get the hair by the base and pull it out, and you typically try to get, I don't know, 40 to 100 hair, and that should be good enough to, to get the uh, demonics. So those are the typical areas where, or situations where you'll want to do hair plucking instead of scrapings. Um, and, um, in, in most cases, you'll be able to find demonics. It may not be as sensitive as the disc scraping, but uh, 
it's better to to do it that way and like don't don't risk uh, um, you know poking a scalpel going through through an eyeball. Um, dermatophytes. So that's uh, microscrum canis on the left. So what are the, the tools we use for this? When you suspect dermatophyte, or you're trying to rule it out? What's that? Sorry, I didn't hear. Yeah, that's one of them. So is that a very sensitive method, or are you going to find uh, dermatophytes every single time when you use a wooden knife? Okay. Okay. So the microscrome canis, which is the most common uh, strain of dermatophyte, uh, will fluoresce, but only in 30% of the cases. So you're going to miss it in 70% of the time. And the other species, um, like trichophyton, for example, don't fluoresce. Um, and then you also have to make sure that what fluoresces is the hair shaft, because it's a, it's a parasite of the, it's an infection or parasite of the of the hair shaft. So what needs to fluoresce is the hair shaft. Um, scales and um, scabs will typically fluoresce as well, but that's not um, that's not uh, relevant uh, in this case. We we don't consider that a, a, a positive. I'll show you a, a positive on our slide. So the wood snipe is one 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 way, um, but um, you also need some uh, other uh, uh, material here because uh, you have to obtain. Um, also, probably a sample for culture, and so you'll need your to do a scraping or obtain a little bit of sample, or use your forceps. Okay, so there were multiple answers there. Okay, so a KOH preparation. Um, so you don't use you don't use my, uh, mineral oil. You need the KOH, um, and that's a method that's you know that's easy to do, but it's unfortunately not often going to show you the, the spores. Uh, so what you do is just pluck some, pluck some hair. Um, and then, if you're lucky, uh, you will see uh, these spores uh, attached. And you need to you need the KOH to really break down all the debris and clear up the surface of the iron shaft to actually these all spores of, uh, of dermatophytes right on the, on the edge here. OK? So. A little bit difficult uh, to use this as a, as a diagnostic tool for dermatophytosis. Certainly, what will be a lot more diagnostic uh, would be to use the wood lamp, as long as you have the uh, typical granny apple fluorescence. Um, so it shouldn't be yellow, it shouldn't be white. It needs to be green, and fluorescent green. Um, so basically, the thought process behind the use of a wood lamp is that um, if you use a certain um, wavelength of uh, UV light, you're going to be able to visualize uh, infected hair shafts um, because the metabolites that are being produced by dermatophytes do uh, fluoresce. Uh, so it's just these proteins that, that will uh, give it its uh, fluorescence. It is temperature dependent, so um, typically you know, you should warm up the lamp for a few minutes before using it to, to really obtain the right uh, wavelength, okay? So don't use it too quickly. So it is fast, it is inexpensive, it's a, it's a good um, screening uh, method. The problem is that it won't tell you if it's microscope kinase or something else. Uh, that's only a culture that can do that. Um, it's good, and it's going to, be, going to miss microsperm kinase in, well, 50% uh, of the time or even more. Um, it won't allow you to um, detect trichophyton, which is another type of dermatophyte. And then you have the false positive, like I said, uh, bacteria, crust, scales, they can also fluoresce. And that should not be confused with uh, an infected hair shaft. 